Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Tom Drury. I'm a third generation horseman. I've been in the training in the state of Kentucky for over 30 years now. I lease a barn at Skylight Training Center in Goshen, Kentucky. I, uh, I have about 50 horses in training. I have over 30 employees that, that uh, I'm responsible for. And uh, I've spent my entire career training horses in the state of Kentucky on a, on a year round basis. You know, I want to say that again, 50 horses and 30 employees. Um, I looked last night, so far this month, I've written checks to 19 different outside vendors to, uh, to keep my business going. That's everything from uh, bookkeeping to insurance to hay and straw to grain, uh, you know, many, many other things. Um, Turfway Park just concluded their holiday meet, which runs the month of December. Um, they had a record number of stall applicants this year. Uh, I think it's in part to the uh, multi-million dollar surface that Churchill installed, uh, the all-weather racing surface. Uh, 296, in that, in that one month, 296 different trainers raced horses at Turfway Park. Uh, those trainers have the same employees, they have the same outside vendors that they're dealing with. Um, they have the same, uh, you know, it's all it, it, it's all the same for each person. So uh, I, I think the the trickle down effect uh, that horse racing provides to the state's economy, I think that's certainly something that, that that's worth noting. Uh, it's not just owners, trainers, and jockeys. It's uh, it's a it's a lot of other people that uh, that rely on this industry to feed their families as well. Um, you know, there's been some debate on how positively the HHR affects us as trainers or us as horsemen. And, um, you know, it's really, in, in my eyes, it's, it's really a pretty simple answer. In uh, 2018, a maiden race at Turfway Park under the previous owners had an $18,500 purse to it. Uh, maiden race is a race where a horse has never won a race before. That same horse was eligible for a race uh, at Oakland Park in Arkansas where they have the expanded gambling. Uh, that same purse at Oakland would have been 75000 So if, if you're a small breeder in Kentucky and you're relying on income of your horses to, to keep your, your business afloat, are you going to run your horse for 18000 or are you going to run your horse for 75000 uh, There's a pretty big gap there. Uh, once Churchill bought Turfway, as I mentioned, the first thing they did was they installed a, they installed a brand new track surface. They spent millions on it, uh, and, and, and that money came from, the, came from the HHR. They immediately, that same purse that I just mentioned was 18000 that same purse immediately jumped to 46000 And, uh, you know, for the first time in a long time, we as horsemen felt like the, the playing field was starting to level up a little bit, that we were – you know, we were able to compete with the rest of the country and uh, as far as the purse structure goes. Um, you know, Ellis Park has pledged over $100 million to improvements of their racetrack. Uh, they're, you know, they're talking about putting lights in and having night racing, which during the, during the summer months and, you know, when you're running in July and August, uh, being able to get out of the extreme heat, that's, you know, it's just a positive for the horses and the horsemen. Um, Kentucky Downs has pledged $25 million to renovating their, uh, their, their turf course as well as their grandstand. Churchill Downs just put an $8 million equine medical center in. Uh, you know, I think this year uh, they're going to spend a little over $10 million re completely redoing their turf course. So, so to say that the HHR money doesn't affect the horses, is, it, it's just not a true statement. Um, I think anybody that's that's paying attention to what's going on in horse racing can see that. Um, you know, to me, it's not it's not so much about numbers though; it's about people. This is uh, you know this is the livelihood of a of a lot of people in Kentucky. You're talking about sixty thousand people that uh, that rely on this industry to feed their families, and uh, you know, right now there's a lot of fear and frustration going on within within the equine community. Uh, we. I guess we see things a little more black and white, and uh, you know, it's just a, it, to us, it's a no-brainer. This is this is an absolute no-brainer. We need HHR to 
compete with the rest of the country and to keep our horses and our jobs in the in the state of Kentucky. Um, you know, you're always going to be able to enjoy the Kentucky Derby. I think it's always going to be here, but but these smaller tracks they won't they won't survive without the HHR. They won't survive without the the added uh, the added purse money. And uh, I think Turfway Park just proved that you know when you when the tracks put the money back into the into the tracks and and the, and the horses, you know they're going to show up and they're going to be there. Um, Racing showed, it showed the world last summer during the COVID mess that uh, racing's as strong as ever. And uh, I just truly hope that you guys will help bring it back to Kentucky. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.